Hey everyone, welcome. As I'm rebuilding my stolen bike from 2023, yes, you're right, behind me, that is a Yeti Arc Hartel. I thought I would use something that I briefly introduced to you not too long ago. That is this, the Wheeltop EDS. This is the OX, the mountain bike version of their wireless drivetrain. So let's get this installed. And I call this incorrectly a drivetrain. In reality, as you probably know from that unboxing video, this is just an upgrade kit, an upgrade kit that includes the derailleur and the shifter. I'm gonna use this with an EXO crank set that gives me the 55 millimeter chain line, using this with an absolute black oval chain ring that I actually talked about in the ovals for T-type transmission video. I'm gonna make sure to post that in the description as well. I'm using this with an old X01 10 50 tooth cassette. I like the 50 tooth cassette more than the 52. Ask me in the comments why that is. The frame uses an UDH derailleur hanger, so it is compatible with the T-type transmission. However, this wheel top derailleur doesn't need direct mount. It actually needs a derailleur hanger. That's why it is compatible with three to 14 speed drivetrains, whatever you might have. If you're wondering about tools, we don't need a whole lot. However, you're gonna need at the minimum a four millimeter hex, a five millimeter hex. You're gonna need a chain cutter for sure, a bit of Loctite blue and the wheel top application. This is gonna be essential when you get to fine tuning the drivetrain. But step one is always gonna be installing the shifter. And if you remember from my initial video, these two devices are actually paired with each other already. So step one is gonna be installing this on the handlebar, then we'll move to the derailleur, the chain, and everything else. Shifter comes with a standard 22.2 bar clamp, and this is a one piece. So you would have to remove your grip first, then obviously slide this onto the handlebar, this is the four millimeter hex to tighten it and start to play with the position and the end result would be something like this. You don't have a lot of options here in terms of angles and position, but this is not too, too bad. It's kind of weird how this button uh, at the bottom is a bit raised compared to the one at the top. Almost feel like having them at the same height, it would make it easier. Now I have to warn you that the two bolts that would hold this shifter to the handlebar and the shifter to the bar clamp, none of those bolts use Loctite whatsoever. So I would highly, highly recommend just to take your Loctite blue and just put it on the threads before you get this installed. And if you look at the way the shifter attaches to the bar clamp, you will see that this is very similar to what SRAM does. So you could think of using either a SRAM little bar clamp because it's slimmer, looks a bit nicer, or use adapters like this one from Wolftooth. This is iSpec EV Shimano to Matchmaker. Unfortunately, they're not an exact match. The wheel top shifter is a bit narrower than a SRAM shifter, and you get all this play between the shifter itself and the bracket or the adapter. So I would recommend sticking with the wheel top bar clamp as the only option for now. Next, we're gonna install the derailleur. And just like I said in that initial video, make sure you charge the battery, update the firmware. And remember, there's no access button on these derailleurs. So to wake them up, you need to either connect the charger or just to move them to wake them up. Just like with the shifter, there's no Loctite whatsoever on this bolt use some of that Loctite blue on it. You're gonna need a five millimeter hex just to get it installed. And just to remind you, you're gonna have the B-gap adjustment screw going against that little tab. And that little tab is gonna stop right here on the derailleur hanger. So Loctite first, hold that tab with your finger so it doesn't uh, go away from you start in almost this vertical position of the derailleur and as you start to tighten, bring it down to touch that stop. 
And finally, I'm gonna tighten this to 10 newton meters. That is the torque recommended by Wiltop. And remember, this doesn't have a cage lock here, so we're gonna have to work with it just like we would with the Shimano derailleur. Using a three millimeter hex key, you can adjust the limit screws of this wireless derailleur. However, I would recommend just using that as a safety measure, just like the Eagle Axis does. And we're gonna play with that at the very end. For now, what we're gonna have to do though is grab the Will Top app and just make sure that we align that uh, guide pulley with the first cog on our cassette. So wake up the derailleur first. Remember, this is important. Launch the app, and even though it shows me the components here, this is not connected at this point. What you have to do is tap on that Bluetooth button, and at this point, you are connecting to the derailleur, and tap here, not the first, but the second icon. Preferences, this is where you can go in and change the designation of the shift buttons, okay? Uh, usage mode, whether shared or private, is shared by default. Go here on the debug, believe it or not, that's the title. Go to replace cassette and make sure, obviously, that you have the right amount of gears set up for your drivetrain. In my case is 12, which is fine. Okay, and see this initial calibration? As I click here on the gears, you can see how this is actually shifting the derailleur. I want to go to the first gear. As I press here on these buttons, left or right, you're going to see that top jockey moving in or out. Just line it up exactly with that smallest cog. We're going to be able to play with this later as well. That initial calibration is important because the 11 gear changes after that will start at that point. However, don't waste too much time at that step because we'll be able to adjust it later. And at this point, we got to the chain installation. And as you know, the chain length affects the B cap. So it's important to measure it correctly. Wheeltop doesn't tell us exactly the length of the chain they recommend. However, in my testing with 12-speed drivetrains, I found that both the Shimano and SRAM methods provide the same chain length. I'm gonna use the Shimano method because I think it's easier, and in this case, I'm using a SRAM GX 12-speed chain. Method is very simple, would work perfectly on 11, 12 speed drivetrains, and it implies putting the chain on the largest cog of the cassette, and then we're gonna measure the length of it. This is a hardtail, and I'm gonna mention full suspension in a second. Bring the chain ends together, you have to finish with two inner links always, and then add one outer, one inner, one outer, one inner, so four links for a hardtail. If you have a full suspension, give it a couple more links, so that would be plus six. I really like this method because, especially for a full suspension, it doesn't require you to remove the shock, to take the air out of your shock or anything like that, and it gives you a long enough chain to plane with. Remember, if you were to make a mistake, better cut it longer then shorter. Obviously, next is gonna be to cut the chain to length, and then we're gonna feed the chain through the derailleur, make sure that the chain stays above that tab and wraps nicely around the jockey wheels. Final step is gonna be to connect that quick link. Always pay attention to arrows or any other instructions that the manufacturer might have. The easiest way to connect that quick link is to move the chain so the quick link comes to the top. And while holding the rear brake, just give your pedals a good yank. Always check both sides of the chain to make sure that the two halves are properly attached. At this point, we can definitely spin our cranks for the first time. Don't freak out if the chain looks to be a bit too long because we have not adjusted the B gap and that is gonna be the next step. Shift 
to the second largest cog of the cassette. And this is where SRAM would recommend you to use their fancy tools to adjust the B-gap. However, I'm gonna refer to a video that I've done a long time ago, I'm gonna post it up in the corner, where I show you an alternative to something like this. With the chain on that second largest cog, just grab a three millimeter hex key and try to squeeze it between that top jockey and the largest cog of the cassette. If you can barely squeeze these three millimeter hex in there, that will take you into the ballpark of where the B gap should be. And at this point, we can try to shift to the largest cog, make sure that that happens without any friction between the derailleur cage and the cassette and then shift all the way down to the smallest cog, obviously observing the shifting, chain rubbing, or anything like that. And while in the smallest cog, make sure that there is still some tension on the derailleur cage. You can see this is plenty good for my 12-speed SRAM drivetrain. Remember, B-gap adjustment is not exact science. There's gonna be a range in which your derailleur uh, functions properly, Hardtail is easier because you can do it on the bike stand. Full suspension, remember to do this under your weight, so at the sack point of your rear suspension. And by this time, you probably have an idea of whether there are unwanted noises when shifting between gears, and this is where the fine tune it comes into play. SRAM calls it the micro adjust. Yes, this is the wheel top app. You can go under debug, initial calibration, and adjust it from there. Highly recommend that you do this on your first gear and no other gear. However, there is a way to micro adjust from the shifter. You see this little button at the back of the shifter? If you just switch that to the other position and by pressing the up and down buttons, you can also micro adjust your gears. This would be a cassette wide setting though. So as you micro adjust, you're gonna micro adjust every gear on that 12 speed or 11 speed cassette. The beauty of the wheel top system is that it allows you to change or micro adjust each gear though. You just go here under debug again, then scroll all the way down to where it says fine tuning gear. And you're gonna see for the first, second, all the way to, in my case, 12th gear, the position of that derailleur. And you see those values like uh, 220 for the first gear. And you can see how I can actually modify that. You can go up and down by 50, so quite a bit of adjustment. This could be especially important when you have cassettes with one gear that's a bit noisier than others. Also, this would allow you to adjust for a Shimano cassette, which is slightly wider than the SRAM 12 speed. This whole system seems to be set up for SRAM from the get-go. How does this work? Well, here's the drivetrain, shifting gears one by one, both up and down the cassette and you can see the shifting is pretty quick and without any unwanted noises. And if you press and hold the buttons, you can see how quickly I can go all the way up the cassette to the 50 tooth and then all the way down the cassette to the 10 tooth. Overall, I'm quite impressed on how this works out of the box. And that is, in a nutshell, how to install a Wheeltop EDS-OX, the MTB version of their wireless upgrade kit. What do you guys think? Do you have questions for me? Did you find this interesting, useful, or hard to follow? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you have questions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And until next time, hope to see you folks on the trails. Cheers, guys. Cheers.